Hey guys, Karina here. Welcome to Chickadee Farm. Today we are going to be canning the first of our tomatoes. Well, not quite the first of our tomatoes. I mean, they've been coming in kind of here and there for the last several weeks. And you've probably seen me putting, washing them up, putting them in a bag, throwing them in the freezer. So I weighed out what I have. Plus I do have some fresh in here that I will use. And it, it's about 19 pounds. So, my goal is to make about 12 pints of crushed tomatoes this year. And this is just one of many tomato products I hope to do, depending on how many tomatoes I get. <laughs> so we're doing crushed tomatoes today. And this comes from the Ball Complete Book of Home Preserving. And this is a fantastic book to use, especially if you're a beginner. Any of the Ball books are really, really great. They tell you everything you need to know about how to start canning, the equipment you need, what you can water bath can versus uh, pressure can safely. Um, so the thing about these recipes as well is that they are all tested and safe. So you can feel really good about using any of these recipes. You have to stick to them almost exactly, but if you do, you don't have to worry that you might be killing your family with some horrible bacteria. On that note, it is a very controversial topic, safe canning versus not safe canning. And I just wanna let you know that for the most part, I do try to use safe tested recipes. However, I don't always. I've been canning for enough years that I feel pretty comfortable with what ingredients can go safely in and the, the uh, how much density is in a jar. So, I don't always use tested recipes. I will always let you know if I'm using safe or not tested, tested or non-tested. But like I said, very controversial. People are, some people are hardcore on one side or the other. Um, and you do you. I, whatever you wanna do is fine. And I will, like I said, I will always let you know which I am using. Today, we're going with tested. <laughs> All right, so what we need to do is um, all of these, these have been thawing. I think they're mm, not completely thawed, um, but we need to peel these, which will be really easy. The skin should just slip right off and the cores should be easy to pop right out. And then we will get those in a big pot to boil down. And then um, these will need to be blanched, so I'll need to put them in some boiling water and then um, for like 30 seconds, I think, and then put them into some cold water. And again, the peels should just come right off. So that is our first thing. I do have all of my supplies ready to go. So I have my big water bath canner. Uh, this is the first time that you're seeing this. I finally brought it up, so it needs water in it and to start getting heated up. And then I've got all of my jars here and I have lids and rings here. So I think we're ready to go and tomatoes, of course. So let's get going. All right, we're going to get a couple of pots filled with water. This one we will use for the blanching. And then I will fill up the canner as well and get that, like I said, get that heating up. And I will get to work getting these washed up and their cores taken out. And then once the water is ready to boil, um, we will get them blanched.
So most of these are Romas or um, these are um, Federale. And actually, I think next year I will grow a lot more of these because they are huge. And I think if the plants hadn't gotten so stunted with the freeze, I would have gotten a really good, um, they would have produced really well for me, but they didn't produce super great. So the, the plants have a decent amount on them, maybe like 10 or 15, but they are all this size. So that's pretty impressive. And these are an indeterminate, so they would just keep growing and growing and producing. So, um, but I do also have a couple of just slicing tomatoes. Um, these, these three here are Paul Robeson's and I'm just gonna use them cause they're getting a little mushy, not mushy, they're ripe and ready to get used. So I don't want them to go bad. And then these guys are Ace 55s. Sometimes I use as slicing tomatoes, um, but they are also considered a canning tomato. So we are going to use them as well. All right, I'm just gonna get these. I'm just gonna actually slice off the ends of these romas. I don't think I need to actually go in and core them, core them. And then kind of any spots that don't look great like that, we're just gonna cut those off as well. Probably should invest in one of those little core guys that makes this much quicker. I don't think they're even that expensive. <laughs> but you guys, actually, this is the first time I have ever canned tomatoes of any kind other than um, I've done tomato jam in the past. Uh, so this is all new to me and you get to follow along on the journey. Isn't that fun? The good and the bad, you will get to see. But that is why I don't have things like those little, they're like a little claw spoon. That's the best description I can give for it. Um, it has little point, pointy ends on it and you can just scoop it right up. Our water is boiling away, so we can get these guys going. Highly recommend using a spoon of some kind to put them in the water. So you don't splash yourself with boiling water. Nobody wants that. All right. We will just let these get up to a boil here. Like I said, 30 to 60 seconds, kind of when I start seeing the skins um, peel away a little bit from the tomatoes, I will take them out and put them in here. I'm gonna grab some ice. is starting to crack like that, that's what you're looking for. All right, let's see how we're doing here. Ah, look at that. I don't know if you've ever peeled peaches or any other things that you would take peels off of, plums, that sort of thing. But I have definitely had issues where they'd say, oh, just blanch them for a couple of minutes and the skins will slip right off. And they don't. <laughs> so it's lovely when they do.
right, so we are going to get these guys kind of just diced up and in the pot. I actually recommend um, that you chop up about two cups at a time and get them heating. There's a reason for this and I can't remember what it is. So if I find the reason for it, I will put it on screen for you. <laughs> You do want all of the juices from your tomatoes. But we're just giving these a rough chop because they're gonna get crushed. Obviously, they're crushed tomatoes. in there and heat on. Heat it pretty low to start out with. And just gonna take my handy dandy potato masher here and smush them up so we get the juices running. These are pretty juicy already. So you shouldn't need to add any liquid to this though. Just continue adding them. I have finished chopping up this first batch of the fresh, well, unfrozen tomatoes. Oh, and we are going to leak all over the place. Very carefully. I'm going to dump this. Next, we need to start getting these guys peeled and cored. Like I said, some of them are still a little frozen, but the skins look like they will still come right off. So, no, maybe not. All right, another thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dump out these all in the sink and then the ones that are like ready, ready to go, like this guy, uh, will get right away, on right away, and then the others, they'll be a little more spread out, so hopefully they can start thawing. It's pretty warm in the house, so it shouldn't take long. Back on the topic of safe versus unsafe canning. The uh, reason that you take off the skins in most recipes for tomato preservation is the skin actually harbors the most bacteria. And even if you wash them thoroughly, you just can't get it all off. So it's just safer to take the skin off. And honestly, a lot of times, I mean, like the skin is pretty thick and I wouldn't really want it in there. So I don't mind taking the skin off. I probably would anyway. But you will definitely see people can with the skins on their tomatoes. And there are recipes that you don't need to peel the tomatoes, but that's typically because there's a bunch of acid, extra acid. Um, in the recipe and, and I will be adding acid you have to add acid to all tomato recipes but it's a fairly small amount just to make sure that there's enough acid but like a recipe where vinegar is a fairly main ingredient you can often find those recipes that don't require you to peel all right I'm just gonna get these all chopped up in the pot.
took a little break for dinner. I got a late start. I didn't start until almost 3.30. So figured I needed to stop for dinner or we weren't going to eat until like 8.30 or 9. And I was at a good stopping point. So we are now back to it. And actually it was kind of also perfect because the tomatoes are pretty much fully thawed now. So it will be easy to finish getting all of these off. Oh, and David sharpened my knives for me. Where'd they go? Here it is. So let's now hope that I don't cut myself. back on. I have had them simmering just on low, low, low heat uh, all through dinner. So, because I didn't want them to uh, get cold and have to start over. All right. So I have, I don't know, probably 40 more tomatoes to peel. So as soon as I get these finished, I will get back with you. So I actually decided, well, my pot is full and my other large pot right now is being used for chicken stock. So I'm going to stop there for right now, at least with this batch. I still have that many tomatoes left to go. So what I'm gonna do is um, finish cooking these down to the appropriate number and uh, get them jarred up and into the canner. I'm not gonna be able to fit all 12 jars into my canner. I think I can only fit like maybe nine, nine or 10, no, eight, probably eight. So I'm gonna have to do a second batch of canning anyway. So I'm gonna get these into jars and get them going. All right, so this needs to gently boil. I'm not sure exactly what that means. So I'm going to simmer since my pot is very full for five minutes. Um, of course, most of this has already been simmering for much longer than that, but I'll give it a couple more minutes while I let my jars warm up. And I actually can fit nine jars in my canner. It's been a while since I used to the, this big guy. So I did, oh, right. So I have the jars in the canner um, warming up because you do not want to put boiling hot liquid into cold jars and then put those jars, which are now hot, into hot water. It just causes too much thermal shock and they can break. And this has definitely happened to me. My friend and I uh, like to do these massive pickle canning days. And a couple years ago when we did it, I think we broke probably five or six jars of pickles. And of course, every time you have to dump out the water in the canner and because you don't want to stick all of your jars in, like especially when it was the bread and butter pickles that burst. So the water was all sticky with sugar. Anyway, so I've learned, do not do that to your jars. They don't appreciate it. Our sauce is ready here, or rather crushed tomatoes. So, we are going to start getting it into jars. Okay, so I just wanna make sure how much, I'm not using lemon juice, so we, like I said, you need to add acid to any tomato products that you're canning. And you can either use bottled lemon or lime juice, or you can use citric acid. So I decided to go with citric acid. So I need, since I'm doing all pints, I will need a quarter teaspoon in each jar. I'm also going to add salt, and which is a half teaspoon per pint. All right, let's get some measuring spoons and get going. So the other thing that they recommend you do is only work one jar at a time. So since I've never done this before, I'm going to follow the directions. All right. 
you know what, I've already forgotten if it was a quarter teaspoon of citric acid and a half teaspoon of salt or the other way around. So it was, Quarter teaspoon citric acid. Half teaspoon salt. Let's get this guy out of here. Here we go. And you know what? The other thing we need to check is headspace. And half inch. Quite sure where it is, so let me just check the handy dandy thing here. Half inch. Okay, so kind of just above that first rim on the jars. All right, and then we want to right wipe the rim of the jar and just give it a quick test to make sure there are no nicks. Put a Clean new lid and a ring finger tight. Oh, that's warm. And then we just will put it in the canner where it will wait until we have the rest ready to go. All right, so I have all of my jars in here and the water is not quite boiling yet, which is perfect. Um, even though they've kind of, they've been sitting here getting warm gradually, you just really don't, again, wanna put even hot jars into boiling, full boiling water. Um, it can just cause them to break. So we're gonna lower these in. I actually am a little concerned I have too much water in here now, so we might need to take this all out and, nope, we're good, look at that. All right, so now we're gonna wait until this comes to a full boil, and then we will start the timer, and I believe it is 40 minutes, but let me just double check again. Uh, sorry, 35 minutes, but again, we are at um, almost 5,000 feet elevation, so we need to add 10 minutes, so it's gonna be 45 minutes. This is gonna be a long night. <laughs> So now we will just get cracking, finishing up these tomatoes. This is going to make way more than 12 jars. Um, sorry about the weird light going on here. The sun's coming, kind of setting over there. Anyway, um, I have eight jars in there. I decided not to do nine because it was a little too tight of a squeeze to get them in and out with all of them in there. So eight in there, and I've only used, I used maybe half of what's in the pot and I probably can fill this pot all the way up again. So we're probably talking more like 24 pounds. Anyway, I just had to go down and get me some more jars. So I'm gonna get these peeled and into the pot. Speaking of having too many jars, 
or well, this making way more than it says. I actually sat down this afternoon and tried to calculate based on what the book says a pound of tomatoes or, a, you know, this many pounds of tomatoes will make this many pints of this thing. And so I tried to figure out of all the tomato products I want to make this year, how many pounds of tomatoes do I really need? And I came up with, I think it was 202 pounds, 220 pounds, something like that. Over 200 pounds. And I'm quite certain that I don't have 200 pounds of tomatoes out there, even if all of them get ripe, which is a little suspect because it is August 29th and our first frost date is supposed to be September 15th. Granted, that could not happen. It could, we could have a later frost, but I'm not counting on it. So anyway, I'm also have been concerned that my tomatoes are really late in getting ripe. Because of course I'm watching other people and they're already picking 50, 60, 70 pounds of tomatoes a time every time they go out to the garden. And I'm just not anywhere close to that. So I had found a farmer, a local farmer, organic farmer actually, who has tomatoes um, available. Actually, I was looking at him because I was gonna go get um, ears of corn from him because my corn did nothing, literally nothing this year. Um, and they actually also have tomatoes. So I emailed him and I was like, hey, I wanna come get some corn, but also do you have paste tomatoes? And he wrote back and he's like, oh, they're not, they're just starting to come on. I was like, oh, really? So it's not just my tomatoes. And apparently that's just normal for here. And this is one of the challenges of gardening in a place that I've never lived. Um, and it's like not even close to any place that I've ever lived in environment wise, weather wise. So I just had really no idea what to expect. But apparently paste tomatoes tend to ripen later than your kind of average slicing tomatoes. Ooh, our water is boiling. I need to set a timer. Alexa, set a timer for 45 minutes. Perfect. Anyway, so that made me feel so much better about where my tomatoes are because mine are actually all just starting to turn as well. Well, not all. Big chunks of all of my paste tomatoes are, are blushing now. So, and typically they all tend to get right at the same time or right around the same time. Anyway, I still think that I am going to need to get extra tomatoes, although I may now need to reevaluate based on how much this recipe is making more than I expected. You know, they're always just estimations, what they say you can get. Sometimes you get more, sometimes you get less, but usually it's only like a pint or two difference and this is like double what I was expecting. Oh, okay. We are currently going to have a storm right now. Yeah, this is what it does. It like was just beautiful and sunny, right? And now it's um, going to thunder and lightning and it's really windy and raining. All right. Anyway, so I probably need to reevaluate how many tomatoes I need and decide if I actually need to get, because I was thinking I need to get like a hundred pounds extra beyond what my garden is going to produce. Maybe not. You guys, I just went out to feed the chickens their scraps. And when I came back, Look at this moon. I know it doesn't look nearly as impressive in video, but it is stunning. This is a super blue moon, which means that it's the second blue moon. No, it's the second super moon in the month, which makes it a blue moon. Something like that. Anyway, it's gorgeous.
All right, first 12 are done. And definitely have our first eight, 12. There's eight, there's only eight here. <laughs> it's getting late. So first eight are done, at least eight more, probably at least one more session after that as well. So we might come back to this tomorrow. Hey guys, welcome back. As you can see, it is a different day, different shirt. Um, I didn't get finished until probably, well, well after 10 last night. So I thought I would just come back this morning and let you know how it went. I ended up getting nine additional jars, which ended, so that ended me up with 16 total. I know I was worried that I was gonna have double of what I had planned on, which was 12, but um, just four extra jars is, is actually kind of normal either direction, maybe a little bit more than expected, but it's not gonna go bad. So if I have to can less next year, then that's great. And I did, I wanna show you, well, I just shook this one up, so it's not showing very well. I remembered why you want to start cooking your tomatoes immediately. And it's this separation issue. So I think actually it matters more when you're making sauce um, than with crushed tomatoes because with sauce, you really don't want it to separate. With crushed tomatoes, it, it doesn't matter because you're just, you're gonna throw it all in. Um, but for some reason, if you immediately start it heating up as you cut it and don't let it sit in bowls chopped up, um, it will not separate as badly. I'm not sure the science around it, but that was what I was thinking about when I said I want to get it in the pot right away. Anyway, so we have several more tomato canning projects coming up and I did, let me just show you, I went out to the garden this morning and did kind of my first big harvest of tomatoes. So there they are. I know that most of them look very green right now, and they are. Um, they're all blushing. They ha all have at least a hint of color. And um, a lot of my tomatoes are laying on the ground just because I didn't do a great job of supporting them. Honestly, I wasn't sure that they were even gonna grow, so I just kind of let them do their thing. And a lot of them, the actual fruit, are laying on the ground. And I have little mice that are starting to chew on them. So, like I said, if I had even a hint of color on them, I've picked them, and that's what I'm gonna continue to do as we go along. And hopefully I will get a nice big harvest, and we will start doing some more canning projects, and I'll definitely bring you along for those. So I hope you enjoyed this, and that you will subscribe if you haven't already. I'd love to have you back. Have a great day, everyone.